All right, everyone, a tasty one for you today on the channels. We welcome back the man himself, Jackie McNamara. Jackie, we used to get to chat to you like every week. It's now like months we go without uh, hearing from you on the channel. So I always feel compelled to ask, how are you getting on? How is life? Good. Uh, all good. Thanks. It's been up to, up to a few games, up at the final, watching that as well. So no, it's been a uh, busy wee time, but I'm enjoying, the, enjoying watching the games. It's uh, been... Been great getting one, watching them win another trophy as well. Busy with regards to work as well and players moving yeah, and all your mentoring stuff. Well, obviously the, the window shuts in the January, so it's now it's kind of you kind of building up for for the the summer and what will happen there. But aye, it's going along going along nicely. Very good. Um, right, so we've got Jackie on today's video. We'll also have Scott Brown uh, later on who spoke to Celtic Fan Media earlier today. And live from his car, we've also got Asim, <laughs> uh, the, the star of Can the show, you... Asim. I, I, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know what your signal's like, etc. But, but how are you getting on? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, I will, we'll give it a go. Um, I'm good, I'm good. I'm away on holiday later on. So I was just getting a wee last minute haircut, <laughs> so um, I'm just outside the barbers just now. Um, Jackie, we've got a, a tasty question for you to kick off. Um, mm -hmm. Is this the best Celtic team since the one that you played in? Uh, possibly. Oh, I think a um, a lot, it's a good question. You know, I think a lot of people were talking about um, Brendan's team, the Invincibles, um, who had a fantastic uh, time as well. Um, I think it's a different, a different kind of setup, but they're definitely a, a good side. But they've got a good mentality about them. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, even if it's not, they're not on their, their game, they still have that mentality to keep going to the end. I think that's what all the the good teams have got. You know, and the one the run that they're on just now um, has been has been incredible. Yeah, 13 wins in a row we've had now. That's that's the graphic there. I mean, as I said yesterday, all, all of the games have been won by at least two goals apart from the, the, the final against Rangers. And the team are just like so relentless. Like every time they go out, you just back them to get the result and they're scoring goals. And, you know, every game there's like a debate about who the man of the match is. And yeah, I mean, we've had some good teams in the past. Um, I, you, you notice I didn't ask you the question of comparing them to your team. I just said, since your team but for me they, they would they would certainly be up there who are you enjoying watching in this Celtic team at the moment uh, to be honest I think there's there's a number of them that are, that are playing um, playing really well Aaron Moy I think if you look at when he first came into the team uh, last season to the player he is just now he looks like he's found a yard as well you know, he, looks, he looks quicker sharper uh, influential at starting things and finishing things off, getting into the right areas. He's he's finished last week in the first, you know, against Barts was just a great finish. But I think he's been probably the biggest surprise for me how he's he's came on, you know, and adapted to the team. He look he looks he looks totally he's been totally different for the player that came in last year. Um, the rest of them, Kyogo, his movement uh, is very very difficult to. To mark, you see it, and the, the defenders struggle to pick him up. Jota, again, we said at the start of the season, only had a wee dip with his injury and stuff like that. But and for me, uh, Kelton Vickers at the back, I think he's been he's been immense as well. Uh, so I think there's so many positives uh, for the team this season. Who would your player of the year be right now if you were voting? For me, it'd be Kelton Vickers. I think, yeah. I think he's crucial to the way they play. You know, there's not many centre backs that are very comfortable getting left one v ones at times or coming down if the full backs way forward. So for me, he would be the uh, the standout. I think it would have been Jota if he hadn't picked up the injury and stuff like that. But um, Kelton Vickers uh, for me has been the one. Is this the campaign starting Asim for for Carter Vickers to be Player of the Year? Where do you stand on that? It's an interesting one um, in such an attacking uh, side that we're so good to watch and with so many kind of different goal scorers that uh, Carter Vickers, similar to last year, he was he was a lot of people's choice. And again, this year, I think it just testament to how consistent and how good he actually is that in such a, 
an attacking side that he's still one of the ones that people look at as our most important players. Um, for me, yeah, he's up there. I think it is a short list of maybe four at the moment. Um, and for me, I think I'd probably go at the moment with Kyogo just because I think he's just um, this last, you know since the World Cup, his form's just been unreal in terms of the amount of crucial goals he's getting right now and different types of goals and. Yeah, he's a kind of Cali's man, and obviously, like last year, he kind of shared the load with Jack Amakis in terms of the goals. Um, but obviously, as kind of the main striker at the moment, he's getting a lot of the game time and started pretty much every game since the World Cup. And um, yeah, I think it's it's a short list. Um, you know, I have plenty plenty of games still to go, but I would put him, Kyogo and Carter Vickers as my kind of front two. He's averaging a goal every 94 minutes this season, Kyogo, when you consider that he didn't score any in Europe and, and played the majority of those games. That's a, an incredible record. Uh, shall we chat about the obvious thing that everyone's chatting about at the moment, the uh, the semi-final draw for the Scottish Cup? We had the final um, quarter-final last night. Jackie's old team, Falkirk, made it past Air United. Um, decent game, that one. They're into the, uh, the semi-final. We had the draw after the game, and wouldn't you just know it, guys... Uh, I commented on the one in three chance of us drawing Rangers before the draw, and that's exactly what came out. Um, Rangers versus Celtic in that order. And um, yeah, Jackie, with, with all due respect to Inverness and Falkirk, it kind of feels like this is the treble right here. Celtic v Rangers at the end of, of April. Do you agree with that? Aye, uh, definitely. I think, um, I know it's, it's no, it's no um, right to kind of write the other teams off before the final but you know I think the the, the form that Celtic's in uh, you know as I said nobody can touch them so this for me yeah is the treble if they win that which uh, which they've shown uh, in the final the League Cup you know the, the, uh, how good they are um, and I think this you know this is the be icing the cake for to win that, and then go on and win the treble. Asim, I was following your Twitter feed last night, and you were you were buzzing. <laughs> I think with the fact we've drawn them in the semis and and not the final. But why why did you want it in the semis? Is it just a case of just it's going to happen? Let's just get it over with. Yeah, I think uh, we all know that we're going to have to to beat them to win the cup. You know, like Jackie says, you obviously don't want to rule out the other two sides. But given how dominant both both Celtic Rangers have been against the rest of the SPFL this season. Um, in recent times, you'd you'd bank on both of them to to have got to the final, regardless if they were playing Inverness or Falkirk. Um, I'm probably a bit in, in Stevie's camp, just the nerves of a final. Um, you know, there's a word we, I could use to describe you, Asim. <laughs> I know the word you're thinking, but do you know what it is? It's not even that. I think obviously we are we're rightfully the 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 best team in the country at the moment by by quite a bit. Um, we've got so much reason to be confident, and of course I am. We will be. You know, we'll beat them. But I just think for us, I'd rather get it get it done in the semi, and then obviously we've got you'd have that final to look forward to. Um, whereas obviously if it goes to the final, it's the very last game of the season. We'll have probably have won the league by then, hopefully, fingers crossed. You just don't want to give them that hope of having that last laugh uh, at the end of the season. Um, and I just yeah, I th- you know, either way, I think I'm confident that we'll we'll get the job done. But I just I'd rather it in the semi and then enjoy a, a final day out against whoever it is. Did it matter to you, Jackie, where where it happened, semi final, final? Um, I mean, it's always nice. It's always sweeter when it's a final. But I think the semi, I agree with him what he's saying because it, there's the tension going into the semi final. You know, you, you you it feels like the final uh, when you're playing playing them. Um, so yeah, I can understand that. It, it takes less of an edge to the the last game of the season because you know if you win the league. And then you're celebrating, and you want to keep the body fresh and and ready for the final. Um, there'll be less less pressure on it if you know um, if it wasn't Rangers in the final. Well, that final has the potential to be one hell of a party if if we get there. I mean, it could just be the most amazing afternoon in, in the sun at Hamden. Um, so we'll wait and see how that goes. How are you feeling generally about the game against Rangers, Jackie? I know it's like. It's like six weeks away, like it's a long time away. But given how the last one at Hamden went, I mean, we, we will go into that as, as favourites. And I guess if, if the Celtic we know turns up, surely we can beat them again. Yeah, I, th- I think um, there's no doubt that they have improved mentally 
we we be on in terms of winning games and and keeping that momentum going. Um, although the I think there's a big fallout from the the final how he set his team out. He got a lot of a lot of uh, stick for that because he brought the players in and he went he went, he went for physicality in the midfield area to try and stop and maybe bring the other players on and, and later on in the game. But you know Celtic were, were dominant all over uh, all over the park uh, and I thought the scoreline kind of flattered them in the end. You know it could have been a lot more. It should have been a lot more even the last couple of chances and the last couple of minutes to go to go three one. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he does this time, uh, Michael Beale, in terms of his starting eleven uh, and how he goes about trying to stop Celtic. Um, because that's for me that uh, you said the last game. You know, I think he got it wrong. I think that Celtic get too much, too much creativity and too sharp from the midfield area. Yeah, um, I would agree with that totally. I think you know we were deserved winners that day. I'm, I'm just looking because we've got ten league games to go and, and potentially two in the cup, and so that's twelve games and three of them are going to be derbies, which is very much like last year. We had that incredible April with the the three derbies. I think we won one, drew one and lost one. Um, th- this is our next six fixtures, so we've got Hibs at home on Saturday, we then go to Ross County, we then have the small matter of Rangers coming to Celtic Park, we then go to Kilmarnock, we play Motherwell at home, and then we have the semi-final. Um, so, you know, if we win those next five games, which are all in the league, Asim, it'll be over. You know, not officially, but the title will be as, as good as one. Is it just a case of parking the cup stuff for now and, and focusing on the league over the next five weeks? Yeah, I think you could even say if we win the next two, or next three, sorry, because I think the third of those games is the is a derby match at Celtic Park, isn't it? So it's uh, Hibs, Ross County and then Rangers, yeah. So I think if we if we win that one, you, you could pretty much say it's, it's over um, in terms of the league. But yeah, I think Ange will be pretty much on, on the same kind of message. And we've, we've seen that before with this group of players. It is, uh, I know it's a cliche, but I think they will pretty much park that until near the time. Um, and that game will obviously take care of itself. So yeah, I think we, we get this job done on Saturday, hopefully against Hibs. Go into the international break, um, still nine clear at minimum, um, and and then we can take care of the rest afterwards. But we're just in such we're, we're so consistent right now. It feels like literally we're we're getting better each week, which is, you know, I, I know you asked Jackie the question earlier about in terms of how good is this Celtic team. But for me, that's the strength of it. Is with Brendan Rodgers' team, you look at it, they peaked in that first season, and then it gradually maybe declined in the in the following ones. Whereas with with Ange, it seems like we're getting better. Uh, it's just the the machine is just getting stronger. You, even if you take out a couple of players, the ones coming in are just as strong. So that for me is the most exciting part about this team. Is I don't think we've hit our peak yet. Like I think we can continuously get better, and hopefully we'll we'll see that towards the end of the season and then in Europe next year as well. I mean, I think that's a really good point, Jackie. This team is just like continually getting better. And Ange says, you know, every season he wants his team to peak at the end of the season. I mean, what what are the reasons for the team just continually getting better? Is it just Ange, the way Ange is, and the fact he's all about improvement? Is it, you know, that just the, the players do they have a part to play in it as well? No, I I, I do. I think he's all about improvement and 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 getting better. I think. Um, I think his biggest thing now will be to get a team to go and compete in Europe in the Champions League. I know we've played there, but that that would have kind of hurt them because I think that in certain games they've done really well, but just that little bit extra. And that'll be the wee bit he'll want to try and put right, you know, and that's when he'll get real credit um, for doing that in European. You can see that for when he first came in, how he was struggling against teams like Mitchell and things like that, then you're going to compete against the best and Real Madrid and doing well for an hour, you know, against the teams at that level. He'll want to go and compete and then start winning these games and then that's when you see a real difference. Domestically, he's, you know, for when he's came in to now, you know, his first game he lost away at Hearts and you look how he's built this team, how he keeps strengthening his team um, and they've just been relentless. You know, domestically, he uh, He's way ahead, and I think he'll want to keep building that and getting stronger, and then take that into Europe and from next season. Yeah, we've got all that to look forward to, uh, As and we also have a, an amazing end to the season. Now we we kind of know what the end of the season looks like. We're obviously still waiting on the post split fixtures, but we know, 
you know, if we win our next five league games, as I say, you're going to be, what, 12 points clear with five games to go. That At least the job's going to be pretty much done. We know it's that major semi-final against Rangers for the, the real, you know, big chance to win the cup in the final. It's We kind of have a good idea of what, you know, the rest of the season's going to be like. And it's it's very exciting. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm you know, really excited about, you know, the prospect of winning a treble. Yeah, it's, it's it's different from last season. Last season, obviously, it was such a kind of roller coaster um, of ups and downs in terms of like where we were as a club and Ange coming in and how far he took us on. But there wasn't almost that expectancy last season for us to to do what we did. Similar again to to when Martin O'Neill came in. Um, I like in this kind of situation at the moment. It's very similar to that period where when Martin O'Neill came in and obviously turned it around from such a big. Uh, gap the year before and then it was his second season where we were so dominant and again you see that with, with Ange now I think it, sometimes we take it for granted and when you look at the stats of this season it's incredible how consistent we've been the, you know to have only not won two out of all of our domestic games this season is is pretty incredible um, and I think at the end of the season we'll obviously sit back and look and just you know how relentless and, and ruthless we've been this year so there is a lot to, to be excited about a lot to play for still obviously um, one in the bag, like you say, the league we're, we're getting ever closer. It's ten games, so it's you know it's at that point now where you can see the finishing line and, and almost predict which game it might be that we can clinch it, and then that cup game. But it is it's, it's so much to look forward to, and I just feel like we we touched on there. There's you know it's just going to continuously get better, and that's what what makes it so exciting at the moment to yeah. be a Celtic fan, really. Yes, very excited. Um, right, we'll chat a wee bit about Scott Brown because uh, he spoke to Celtic fan media earlier today. Now, he was promoting his event with Mika Lustig, which is coming up at the Ovo Hydro on May the 18th, and this is how it went. Hi, Scott, how are you getting on? I'm not too bad, him as yourself. Yeah, all good. Um, I just wanted to ask you about Callum McGregor, if possible. Um, he's obviously followed on as a, a really good Celtic captain, but when you speak to some people who knew him earlier on in his career, they maybe didn't see that coming. Can I just ask for, for you, what, what was your first impressions of Callum McGregor? And was there a moment when you kind of thought he could be a Celtic captain? I knew Cal was destined to be the next captain. For me, he has the drive. He has the willingness day to day to make himself better but also puts the club before everything else and he's he's got an addiction to Celtic. He loves coming in, he loves winning games and I, I think that's what you want and he's got that understanding with the fans as well that they want to see good football. He sets standards and training and also he pushes them in games. So no there was no there was no better person for the job and we they could have went out and brought somebody else in but nobody's got that love for the, the club that Callum's got, especially coming through the youth all the way through. And, and you're right in saying you obviously didn't get that chance to really say goodbye to the fans on the pitch. There was a moment, though, when you played for Aberdeen, where I think you pulled up with a, it might have been a hamstring injury and, and you got that walk off the pitch with the whole of Celtic Park on its feet. D did that moment register with you at all? Uh, I pulled up because I was old and fragile. <laughs> and I seen Johnny Hayes score an own goal. So, uh, no, um, yeah, it meant a lot, but... It would have been disrespectful for me to walk all the way around the park and uh, applaud the fans as well, especially when we had a travelling support down. And for me, Ange offered me the chance to go out and uh, go and applaud the fans as well. But once you're at a, another club, you can't really go back in an Aberdeen jersey and go and applaud the fans. So um, this is a perfect time and this is a perfect opportunity for myself and Lusto both to do this. It's it's a great, it'll hopefully be a great event. There'll be a few stories, there'll be a few entertaining faces coming on as well. So I'm just delighted to see Lusto as well. So um, that, that's also a good thing. Scott, obviously you're one of a very few uh, people that have played over 600 games for the club, 14 years at the club. What was the thing that you found that separated Celtic from other clubs? Um, and do you attribute that as the reason to why you stayed at the club for so long? I think it's a fan base and how they welcomed me into the place like a, like a family. And th that was the biggest thing for me because obviously I had bad times at the start and there was a lot a lot of CEOs, managers, players that, that kept me going, that wanted me to be about here and that helped me through that. And th there's not a lot of clubs that, that would do that and CEOs phoning you up to make sure you're okay and to make sure they, if there's anything else they can do for you. But... For me, that, that, that's small details. It doesn't take a lot to make you feel really welcome to a football club. 
it might be a phone call, it might be a sit down chat and that's what this club does really, really well and then you've got the fan base and you go to Glasgow, you go to Dubai, you go anywhere and there's always a Celtic strip floating about somewhere and somebody's on a sun lounger and they've left their top there and it puts a smile on my face knowing that they're all over the world and that you might bump into somebody now and then and it's just that phenomenal fan base that you're never going to get away from but it's also it's a great thing to have especially as a player because playing in front of 60,000 fans that, that go mental when you score is the best feeling in the world and to win trophies in front of them for them is even better for a, for a player to give something back to the fans. And obviously in that 14 years you worked under a lot of coaches, you worked under a lot of managers. Was there one that you specifically pick as someone that helped mould your career? And have you taken anything from them as you went to management? Yeah, I still speak to three of them quite a lot. I speak to Gordon, who I first had the opportunity to come into Celtic. He, he was the one that was daft enough to sign me. And uh, whether it was a mistake or no, he'll, he'll maybe admit that later down the line. <laughs> but then I had the opportunity to work with him again at Scotland. And it was brilliant because I knew him really well. We kept in touch throughout the whole time. And then to go back into helping out at Scotland as well. And then obviously playing against Lenny, knowing Lenny really well, playing against him, him being the coach and then him becoming the manager as well, uh, two periods. It was great because you, you got the understanding of what he wanted, what he wanted from, from the lads as well. And still now I speak to him as well. And then we had some great times with Brendan too, who we won a lot of trophies, we had great success with as well. So it was three three managers that I worked with really well that were, won a lot of trophies that were great with me and that you look forward to like speaking to them if if I ever needed anything I, I know I can always pick up the phone and uh, they wouldn't block me <laughs> well well maybe no they now but maybe in a couple of months time we'll see how that goes <laughs> I'm fine, that's almost two years you've been away Scott um, do you think in that time the magnitude of what you actually achieved at Celtic they started to sink in um, with you in terms of, you know, in the day-to-day -day playing football, you're, you're looking to the next game, but now you've been away from it, you're looking from afar and you're seeing how much of a legend you've become at the club. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I'm not one to look back hugely. I, I, I like to look forward, I like to have that drive to go forward and by all means I, I loved every single moment of playing for this club and one day when I probably retire as being a manager or a coach I'll probably sit back and I'll, I'll think about the unbelievable things that we've done and together as a team individually as well but also like even small details of the friendships that we've we've made and kept in touch with as well it, it's brilliant and that's one thing about this club we all still keep in touch with each other we've got group chats here there and everywhere and it, it brings a lot of players together, it brings a lot of players' families together and it, it just puts a smile on everybody's face when you when you meet up with everybody as well but uh, as I say, I've got a huge drive to go forward. I, I loved every single moment since I first signed until the moment I left the club and th th this is why I'm, I was asked to do this event because I never had the chance to say goodbye to the fans that stood by me for the 14 years, that celebrated the trophies, that that were there supporting us through thick and thin and it's just a small thing for me just to say thank you very much and a tweet and an Instagram is not really going to do any justice so for me to have the opportunity with Lusto for the two of us just to sit down and show our appreciation to the fans and also for the foundation as well to hopefully benefit off it. Last season you had spell at Aberdeen um, and you, you scored a goal at Ibrox um, <laughs> and you had a good performance in a draw at Pretodre and you also got coming back to Celtic. Um, so what was it like to watch the new team under hands taking shape and how much did you enjoy helping us win the league last year? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I enjoyed that goal. Uh, I think that was maybe my last goal in professional football so I'll, I think I'll cherish that moment a little bit more than anything else. Um, no, it was it was hard leaving. I, I never wanted to leave with no fans. I, I wanted to say bye. I didn't want to leave on a downward spiral because I knew I was getting a little bit older. I couldn't keep up with the lads. And the, the reason I left because I didn't want to 
I didn't want to embarrass myself. I didn't want to be the old guy that still stayed about because he's been at the club for 14 years. He can sign another two-year deal. We, we can watch him train and he might get five minutes on the pitch. It's, it's not for me that. And As soon as you don't start playing games, I, I knew at the start of the season this was going to be my last season. So uh, There was a new venture that came up late on in the season. And then I had the opportunity to go up to Aberdeen and we, we started off well in the season. Uh, it just wasn't to be, we just couldn't score enough goals and we were letting in sloppy goals as well. And then I had the opportunity to go and play centre-mid, centre-back and I, I enjoyed it to be fair. It was it was a learning curve because I wanted to become a coach. I knew I wanted to become either a coach or a, a manager. And for me to get that nine month under Stephen Glass, it, it meant a lot to me to get that understanding of management, day-to-day -day scenes, routines of players and how that you stop like leaving at half past two in the afternoon and then you have actually proper got an eight to five job now. So, yeah, um, no, but it, for, for me, the my career was unbelievable and I, I loved it and I, I wouldn't change anything. You were, you were talking earlier about keeping in touch with Brendan Gordon. Did you ever and Lenny, um, could I ask you if you could just pick one aspect of um, their management styles to take into Fleetwood with you, what would that have been? Uh, I've stole small details from everyone and I'm not going to say sit here and say there's one thing that I came from one manager over the other because it's the training sessions. I've literally <laughs> went through all the training sessions, understood I wrote a lot down when I was a younger player and I managed to put a lot on the computer and save it as I started to get a lot older as well and it's different styles, different management ways, different uh, understanding of players as well and there's, there's no right way and no wrong way to go about winning games. Uh, yes, we all want to play fantastic football, we get that, especially here at Celtic, you want to entertain the fans, the fans deserve to be entertained, they want to see goals, they want to see trophies, that's, that's amazing. I'm not sure I'm going to bring a lot of trophies to Fleetwood at this moment in time. But we want to play entertaining football as well. We want to go as high as we possibly can up the league. And that comes from training sessions on the way we build the sessions at the start of the season to the way we're going to play and the shape, the system as well. And But it's also for the lads to get the understanding of how I expect them to press, what high intensity I expect them to hit, what distance I expect them to cover in games. And that, that got a little bit more drummed into me the last maybe four or five years at Celtic because when GPS started to come in, you started to look at your stats, you wanted to be top of stats, you wanted to have the most touches in a game, you wanted to have the most forward passes. So looking at all those things, we, we always dissect that. And yeah, you can take Tom Rogic, for instance, who maybe didn't run as much as what myself and Cal did, but he could do something that nobody else could do with the ball. So you, you've got to give and take a little bit. And when you see somebody that's got a talent, but maybe can't do other things that others can't. You can always bring in players that are fitter, that are willing to do that, but nobody can replace that talent that somebody's got sometimes. So for us, it's just about understanding to get the best 11 players on the park and then go forward and keep stealing little bits from each manager and even Ange now when I see him play the, the, the system that they play as well. And you see the rotations as well. And I'm, I'm always looking to try and better myself, to try and get a better understanding of how Celtic play and it's not for me to come up here and watch Celtic train, That's this is Angie's place, this is not mine, And it, but for that 90 minutes on a Saturday I can sit back, I can watch them, I can get that understanding of how Cal goes out wide to go and receive the ball, the wingers high up the park, so the, the, there's, there's great, great ways to focus on all different formations and uh, systems as well. Well, we were going through the quadruple treble, a lot of the lads had a, a living legend in yourself to, to train beside and look at each day. Um, but what I want to ask you is, for that period of time you were at Lennox, we always had Clarkie in the background, Danny in the background. Um, how important do you think that is for, for any player coming through that door at Celtic that you've got guys like Danny McGinn and John Clark always in and about the building? Yeah, it was good because the, this club's built in history. It's it's an unbelievable club. It's got great history as well, going all the way back to Danny and Clarkie's time as well. And the, a lot of the Lisbon legends came in as well. Uh, they were in quite a lot. They were in round about game time. But to have Clarkie and Danny's uh, ability in this 
uh, training ground every day. Their willingness to go and speak to players and to tell little stories as well. And I'm sure I've heard about a thousand stories for the both of them put together. And it's small details that puts a smile on everyone's face and it makes it a better place. You mentioned Ange Postacoglu <clears throat> in the current side just now. Um, what impresses you most about how we're playing in Ange Postacoglu in general? I think it's the recruitment that he's brought in. Uh, there's been a lot of players that probably nobody in Scotland knew about. And Ange has brought them in through recruitment from probably playing against them and seeing what they're like in the, in the J-League. So for him, that's, that's unbelievable. But also the energy that's in the team. The, the desire to get on the ball, the amount of possession that they've got as well and the amount of goals they're scoring too, is, it's great, it's great entertaining, it's good to watch and I'm sure the fans are absolutely delighted with it so far. We certainly are. Do you have any regrets about not getting the chance to work with Ange? Uh, well, obviously we've spoken very high of them but was there another off, an opportunity to work with him and do you have all the, that? I think there could have been an opportunity but I think for myself and probably for Ange as well, it's probably the best that I left because <laughs> I was getting extremely old and fragile. So you he want he's brought in a lot, a lot of younger players that are very, very fit. And it would have been lovely to see his coaching, to see how well the lads train day to day and to also see what he puts on in training sessions as well. But for me, I, I didn't want to be one of these guys that just stayed about a club for 15, 16 years and I, I just stay because of my name because I've been here for a long period of time. I, I wanted to go and learn a, a different side of it and for me to have that opportunity to go to Aberdeen to learn the chance of becoming a coach, it, it, it turned my head a little bit and yeah, I think at the right time it was the right decision because it's gave me the opportunity to go down to Fleetwood to have that opportunity to become a manager to show well, hopefully that I could be become a good manager in time. Uh, as you know that you're doing the event uh, with Mika, what are some of your favourite memories of playing alongside him at Celtic? I think it was the first day I met him. And Lenny was the manager and I've turned around to Lenny and I've looked at Lenny and went, oh, who's this guy? And he's went, Brunny, he's a good player. And I, I literally was like, right, give him the benefit of doubt. He's skin and bones. He's got tattoos here, there and everywhere and he had long hair. And I'm looking going, wow, he better be some player. And to be fair, I couldn't ask for a better person in the dressing room as well as on the pitch because I knew he always had my back, he always had the manager's back and he wanted what was best for the club but also he wanted to win games, he was a winner, he enjoyed winning games and on big days he st stepped up with goals, he defended with his life and he, he got used to that kind of coming in, becoming the third centre half to let KT bomb forward especially in his later uh, time at Celtic. And I know you obviously left Celtic just as Ange came in, but of the players that Ange has brought in at Celtic, what ones have impressed you the most? I think there's been quite a lot of them. I spoke about Kyogo earlier on. I thought he plays with a smile on his face. I spoke about Rio as well, energy, wants to get on the ball. Jota, good player, wants to score goals. I think Joe Hart's been brilliant as well since coming in and since we probably lost... Fraser and we lost Craigie. Uh, we, we, you need a big personality uh, to go on the goals, and Joe's been exceptional, and so's Carter Vickers playing centre half, and that, that that's been two huge signings for Ange. And uh, them going forward, I'm sure Cal and the forward players have got a lot to thank them for because it, it gives them that little bit more license to drive forward. Okay, what is your favourite memory of seeing? Of sharing a pitch with Mikel Lustig, whether it be something funny or not a big match or, or something like that? Um, I, I think when Lusto scores at Ibrox, when he's he's ran from pretty much the halfway line uh, through a few players and then slides in the faraway corner and just seeing his celebration, his smile that, that's on his face was exceptional that day and knowing what it means to him as well, that to go and score that goal and to, to make sure that our fans were away celebrating. And uh, the second question I, I would ask Scott, I'm just kind of more personally interested, obviously being at Celtic for so long, like, a big thing that made yourself and uh, Michael Lustig so successful is that like, winning mentality, like anything less than a win, obviously at Celtic is, you know, the, the end of the world. <laughs> and, uh, and working with all sorts of players that came into Celtic and now working with players as a manager yourself, how big a part do you think of of a, a team's overall success is having players like yourself and Mika that have that real winning mentality built into them. Yeah, you also have to have good recruitment as well. 
you, you have to have a good understanding of what you want in the dressing room. And we've got a fantastic head of recruitment at Fleetwood. He's brought in some great players, good personalities. And for us to bring in personalities was exceptional because we brought in Sean Rooney for St. Johnson. And by wow, you should see this guy's personality. He's, he's brilliant in the change room. He's loud. We walk in and you can hear him before you can see him. But he's brilliant with the lads in the change room. But then the same was like Lusto as well. Lusto and myself were very loud in the change room. And there's probably a lot of people that used to say that as well. But you want good people in the dressing room. You want people that's got the manager's back. And no matter who the manager was, I always had his back. I would always try and make sure the lads worked extremely hard because one day I was hoping to be in the situation of becoming a manager. And I wouldn't like to see all the players turning their back on me. So... For me, that I gave that I gave every single manager as much help as I possibly could. I've had a long career at Celtic, and I was just wondering if you could go back in time to day one, what advice would you give yourself? Um, that's a very good point. Probably score some more goals. Uh, I think I only scored forty six in my whole time at Celtic. Uh, I'd like to have scored a few more, but I wouldn't change much. I enjoyed it, and yeah, we got beat in some semi-finals and finals and stuff like that, but you learn a lot from that as a player, and the later on I went in my career, we won a lot more than what we lost, and that because myself, Lewis Stoll, Charlie Mulgrew, and people like that had that desire to win games, they, they wanted to better themselves. We, we, we came in and enjoyed training. And I think that's the, the biggest thing, and I think if you're a football player that doesn't like playing football, go and find yourself another job because you're in a luxury position. You come in, you work a few hours running about, you go to the gym and then you leave. So if you can't come in and enjoy that job, you might as well go and find yourself a nine to five sitting behind a keyboard and doing some sort of accounts or something like that because this is probably the best job in the world even though it's, it's such a short period of time. You need to make sure that you enjoy it and you give yourself the best possible opportunity. And just uh, touching up on obviously your 14 years at Celtic, if you've got one memory that maybe stands out, whether it's on the pitch or in training, or a big game, you've always played in some big games, including Champions League games. Um, I think a lot of people gave me a lot for my passing. I got 100% pass rate at Bayern Munich away from home, so I was quite impressed with that. But I think I only had one touch of the ball. So I think that was maybe why. Uh, no, I think... The quadruple tre treble was special. Do doing that, having the willingness and the desire to keep going with a bunch of lads that were in that change room to make sure that we got that over the line against Hearts was, was a big push because there was a lot of the same players there and we were getting us well, I was getting slightly older as well and we just lost Lusto too. So for us to do that uh, was unbelievable for this club and for the fans, but also for us it, as as players as well because it, it, it pays off, you, you have that willingness, you know you can keep going, you can keep going, you can keep winning trophies but then there will always going to become a time that you don't win one and it's the end of the world so for, for us it's now I'm just glad the club's bounced back and they're in a, they're in a positive situation you know. First, first question I had was just for, for somebody, my, myself, I'm in a management position and try and inspire and lead people, um, I just when I watch you I think about how you get the balance between the season and the infectious personality, you know, the bank for the likability and also the, the work ethic and professional side of the game as well, where you can switch on or switch off. Um, is there any advice you give to me or anybody else who's, who's, who's trying my best to inspire those around about them from, from a work perspective as to what those key attributes are in a, in a management and a leader role? I think the more positive you are about yourself, about your job, the, the more it bounces off around other people around about you. And, I'm quite loud, I'm quite outgoing and I'd speak to anybody and I'm quite a happy person away from when I was playing football and I think I tried to bring out the best of everybody when I was in a change room but then I also knew when I went over the, the white line that I would get on them and I think you've got to take the criticism sometimes as well and try and turn that into a positive because even though you're maybe a manager you're not always right I always think I'm right, but then I go back and if I'm wrong, I'll apologise to the players and I'll do it in front of them all. So they, they know that sometimes I am going to get things wrong, but I'm willing to admit my mistakes as well. And I think that shows you the bigger person. Um, I was going to ask if you wouldn't mind just to, to pick out three 
um, the best players you've played with during the Celtic career and three players who he remains really, really close with. I know there'll be loads of those but there's three in particular that you've stayed really close with. Three that I've stayed close with? Eh, well, well, J- James and Cal and KT are the ones that I've probably spoke to the most over my whole time at Celtic, as well as Lusto, so we, we can't not put Lusto on that, so I'm having to take a fourth. Uh, but the, the four of us still speak a lot. We always speak as much as we possibly can to each other, so uh, that, that's, that four's quite tight. The three best players I've played with... Do, can I say myself? Of course. <laughs> well, it's no me. Um, Verge has got to be up there. Verge is, he's been exceptional since coming to this club. Uh, he's went on, went to Liverpool, uh, Southampton and Liverpool as well, and he's been fantastic. Nakamura, when I first came to the club, w- was brilliant and it's a close one between James and Cal so I'm, I'm, I've got a slight man crush on James and Cal so I, I can't get away with that but I've also got a, a, a young other man crush as well on Kieran Tierney so uh, I'm, I've got too many uh, I, I think it's hard because if you pick positions then it's it's a lot easier but KT's been exceptional he's went down to Arsenal he's been brilliant last season then he's been good this season for them as well he's maybe just not as got as much game time but like James and Cal to do it consistently throughout the whole time they've been here, it shows you they they love the club, their willingness, their desire to stay here when they could have maybe moved on. But the club means so much to them. Sorry, to bring your age there, but I was just wondering as you talk about Ange and, and looking on for the side, is there ever a part of you that wishes you were maybe five, ten years younger and, and able to play with some of the new guys around the team and, and being part of his team? Yeah, definitely. And I always wish every day I wake up I'm five or ten years younger, but every time I look in the mirror I've got one more wrinkle. Um, but no, for, for me I'd have loved to play in this team. I'd, I'd, I've got no doubt that it would have been hard to get into it. It would have been great competition as well, but yeah, the, the way they're playing, they're playing some great football at this moment in time. Possession-based team and I, I wanted to play football since I came here. Like get the ball down, play football, but no, we also had that nasty streak about us as well. If teams are going long, direct, that we can compete as well. So um, f- for me, you want to play in any team that's doing really well. Uh, we, you just need to make sure that you're doing that consistently, and that's what these lads are doing. These lads are doing it week in, week out, and they need to make sure they keep doing it on Saturday against Hibs as well. And obviously, you've done really well with Fleetwood in the, in the FA Cup. I think it was the furthest the club's been in, in, in its history in the competition. Great achievement, but how, how difficult is it going from a side like Celtic who are constantly making semi-finals and cup finals to then being at a side like Fleetwood who aren't really expected to make it as far in these competitions? Is that, is that a big change for you? Yeah, it is a big change as well, but the, the lads want to better themselves and they've, we've never been past the flood, third round before. We got to the fourth round, then we got Chef Wed uh, away from home, we got a draw and then we managed to beat them at home. So it shows you the lads are fighting against a top League One side and we managed to compete against them. We beat QPR the round before and they had a strong team out. And then we went to Burnley, we got a man sent off after 42 minutes and we knew we weren't going to have a lot of the ball, but we were very, very well drilled, the lads were. They, they were exceptional that day and we played a low block and they were brilliant for 90 minutes and it was probably the best thing that could possibly happen to us, us losing a late goal like that. But it shows you that we can compete with the, the best team in the Championship. They're going up to the Premier League this season and they deserve to because they're possession-based. They're the best team that I've seen play this season uh, outside the Premier League. But for, for us to be able to compete for 89 minutes, especially 45 of that with 10 men, and defend and put, throw their bodies on the line, but then when we got the ball, try and be composed on it as well, was, was brilliant. It, and I sat back and I really enjoyed that and it's maybe not a part of the game that I enjoy watching us defend for 90 minutes but what they done that day was exceptional. I was wondering, obviously you spent a lot of time in the SPFL uh, and then having to move down to England to start your managerial career. What is like, the biggest difference that you noticed moving from Scotland to England to, in terms of the football you've seen? Well the weather's won. It is definitely not snowing in uh, Fleetwood today. Uh, but no, no, it's for me. There's 
I spent a lot of my career here. I loved playing in Scotland, I loved playing Celtic, I enjoyed playing Hibs and Aberdeen as well. And I really enjoyed playing in the SPFL. I've kind of tried to stay away from it for myself and so that the club doesn't always get brought in about being a former Celtic captain done this with the club and stuff. So it's more based on the lads now. So for me to take that step away from it is sometimes it's a breath of fresh air as well to go away and to go into a place that's quite quiet, quite low key and that you can go under the radar. So for me to have that opportunity to go to Fleetwood, it was it was a no brainer. And for us, we've got a fantastic training facility as well. We've got three first team pitches, we've got Astros, we've got an indoor dome getting built. So it, it, it was the perfect club at the perfect time. And uh, if you can try and pinpoint it down, is there one thing that stands out to you the most most about the SPFL? Winning, uh, just playing football. Playing football and winning games. And f for me, it's a great league. I, I enjoyed every single moment of being in it whether I was at either or the three clubs. But it was just having that drive and it, it did help me being close to home. Uh, I got to see my kids grow up, which was a bonus. And now I'm a little bit further away from them. But uh, no, it's a fantastic league as, as well as what League One is as well. And But for for us in Scotland when, we were, when I was here, uh, I enjoyed every single moment of playing in these games because it meant so much to me. Cheers. See you all later on. Thank you. So Scott Brown in pretty good form, as he always seems to be. Um, Jackie, you know a bit about the, the English Football League from your time as a manager and, and what it's like to manage there. What, what have you made of uh, Scott Brown's start to, to the management game? Have you have you seen much in there to be excited about? Yeah, I think he'd it, it done well. He'd done well. He's been lucky in the, the FA Cup. You know, he had a few yeah. good results in that. Um, it will, obviously... Take a bit of time to, to find his feet in terms of the, you know the the actual league. I think he'll he'll like the the fact that this, you know, you're not playing teams four or five times a season, um, or six, so think, uh, or six, yeah, or seven. One season, <laughs> one seven. My last season at United. Um, so yeah. I think that for this for him, that's the kind of you know you're you're looking more into the opposition. You're analysing them and doing that. In, try to find out things and it's just game after game there's that many games to play you know it's there's not a lot of time to work in terms of you know uh, coaching your team or anything else more pre preparing your team so you need to, the team to be ready and just maintaining them and getting them ready for the next game because there, there is a lot of games that come up freaking fast there's no lot of recovery time but he's I think he's done well you know for his, for his first job I think he's done very well yeah it was it was Kind of funny to, to see him back doing Celtic stuff today. It feels kind of like a, a previous era. And um, what have you made of of his start, Asim, uh, to to life as a manager? Yeah, as Jackie says, he's he seems to be doing really well. Fleetwood, I think, especially this second half of the season, they've really kicked on. Um, and uh, like you say, in the cup as well against Burnley, Burnley who are going really strong this year. They were they were minutes away from getting a, a you know getting that to extra time penalties. So. Yeah, he's doing really well, and I don't know. I never when he was at Celtic. Obviously, you always see him as the kind of joker and the one who's playing all the pranks. But obviously, as a captain, you, you see the other side of him, and I guess that's what he's taken on. Obviously, into his kind of coaching and management, that he's he's got both sides to it. He can he can be a people's person, and you know, obviously, get on with the with the players and things. But also at the same time, he's he's got that other side to him, which is very kind of disciplined, and um, he's obviously doing a good job there. And his hair's looking good as well. I must say. I know it's a weird one, isn't it? The fact that he was shaving his hair off his full playing career. Apart from maybe like he had a weird phase when Celtic were terrible under Ronnie Dyla when he had hair, and then he shaved it off <laughs> under Rogers. But he's he's back to having hair. Um, actually, a meeting of of two former Brown clubs on on Saturday: Celtic versus Hibs at Celtic Park. Jackie, we've battered them twice already this season. Uh, they'll probably come out and play as well, Hibs under Lee Johnson, which which should suit us. Are you envisaging another? Good afternoon for Celtic. Yeah, I think just by watching the, the Rangers game against them last week, you know, Rangers um, at, Cel at Easter Road, even though they got the, the goal early, Hibs, Rangers battered them. Um, hmm. You know, I can see the same. I'd be surprised if he comes out uh, and attacks right from the off in this game. I think you want to keep it tight and try and catch the break because, 
you know, I think if they do come out, I think um, I think it'll be a, a big scoring. Will he come out with a Del Boy jacket on? That's that's the big question. I remember the, the last game at Celtic Park. It was a an absolute shocker. So we'll, we'll see if that goes <laughs> down again. Um, <laughs> And then we're in international break, Jackie. We've got another international break to look forward to. I mean, just just to finish the the form, see since the World Cup, since we came back to now, like it's a it's a long period. I think it's about twenty odd matches, and and the team has just been completely faultless. I mean, it, it's incredible form. It has, and I think them um, again. It gives me something you used before. You're always worried about the the players coming back. You know, when they're playing with international. How they come back with injuries, and but it's been it's been fantastic how they've just settled back in, confident, and even the backup players, you know, the ones that are not starting that are coming on, they're making an impact, which pushes the, the standard up even more. So, no, I think it's um, exciting times, you know, and it should be a good end to the season. It is. Uh, thank you very much. Exciting times for you, Asim, as well. You're away on holiday, so we won't chat to you for a wee while. Enjoy yourself, mate. I hope you have a good one. Uh, not jealous yes. at all. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's currently snowing here in the west end of Glasgow, so yeah, I'll be in uh, sunny Egypt not long, so I'll need to find somewhere to watch that Hibs game on Saturday, but um, yeah, good to get a wee break. Very good. Right, thanks very much, guys. Uh, thanks to Scott Brown for chatting to us as well. Thanks to you for watching, and uh, we'll chat to you on Friday. <laughs>